Good evening, parents. Happy Tuesday. Hope you guys are all doing well. Um, tonight you have Miss Beist as well as Miss Jones, Miss Jackie Jones, counselor. Principal Love. Dr. Coppola. Miss Jens B. Miss Favors. And so we are here to um, just kind of give you guys um, information about everything that you guys want to know. Just so you know, this presentation is being recorded in case you missed something and want to go back and get the information again. Or if you know somebody who couldn't make this presentation, this will be recorded and sent out on Remind. Um, we will send it out as soon as the recording gets loaded. Um, we are first going to discuss senior clearance, then our plans for graduation, and lastly, senior dues. At the end, we will go over any questions you have that we have not already answered. There is a little chat button. Um, as long as you're seeing this on your computer, there's a chat button that you can ask us questions on. So on to clearance. We are going to do our normal senior clearance, but we are just extending the length of the process and are putting protective measurements in place to keep everyone involved and safe. Each senior will be given a specific time and date to show up for senior clearance. For everyone's safety, please show up on time and not early or late. We will have school police officers present these days to ensure this goes smoothly. The next two slides show what this process will look like, and we will post these to remind as well. If the senior shows up late and misses their time slot, they could end up waiting hours until we can fit them in safely. Those seniors whose last names are on this slide will arrive to Bulldog Boulevard, aka the bus ramp, at the, at the given date and time you see on the slide. Any senior in JAR OTC will return their uniform. The next tables every single senior will need to go to. Seniors will get be given a device. Seniors will begin at device clearance or the media center and will pick up a clearance card. This card will have room for the six tables all seniors need to go to. Seniors will place the card down. The person at the table will see if the student is cleared and will stamp their card. If the senior does not owe anything and is academically cleared and has paid their senior dues, they will be cleared for graduation. Once seniors reach the senior dues table and has all six stamps, they will get their student records folder, any honor cords from their club sponsors, and information regarding the graduation ceremonies. Students will then go to the final table to get their caps and gowns if they have been fully paid for. If a student has not finished buying their cap and gown, they can do so at herfjones.com. Students will then leave campus immediately so we can get the space cleared for the next group of students. Those seniors whose last names are on this slide will arrive to the gym lobby parking lot at the given date and time you see on the slide. The same process will occur on this side as on the same side as Bulldog Boulevard. So again, if they need to return their JROTC uniform, they can do that. And then again, they'll go to all tables to get cleared for everything. Even though the student is not at magnet, they're going to be cleared for not owing anything for magnet. So they will still go to all tables. Both this slide and the last will be sent out on remind. Seniors may only arrive during their time frame. Please bring all textbooks, devices, uniforms, and any other property belonging to the school to your clearance. Pay all outstanding balances prior to May 7th. Any organization such as senior dues, textbooks, all of that should be available on OSP for seniors to pay any outstanding balances. Only the senior at the allotted time is allowed out of the car. We will have school resource officers to help maintain social distancing guidelines. All staff will wear gloves and masks. 
Students need to wear masks as well. And seniors will get a clearance card and will need six stamps, media center and devices, textbooks, magnet, and even if they're not a magnet, clubs, organizations, and sports, academics, and senior dues in order to be clear situation. We are determining how to notify all seniors what they owe. Please ensure we have an email address the student uses. We have almost all seniors who have filled out this form. We are missing about 60 students who we still need email addresses. We want to make sure it's something that students can access and access regularly so that they get the updated information as to what they owe for senior clearance. On to what everybody is excited about, graduation. The team has worked really hard to ensure we give our seniors the best graduation while keeping the safety in mind as well. We have two parts to graduation this year. The first part is a virtual ceremony that will be live on YouTube May 18th at 7 p.m. The link will be passed out at senior clearance as well as the next senior parent meeting. This virtual ceremony will go hand in hand with visions. It'll include Val, Sal, and other speeches, two songs sung by some of our senior students, awards and scholarships, passing of the torch, military oath of office for those who have um, committed themselves to the military, presentation of graduates, and turning of the tassel. The event we are very excited about is what is occurring May 19th at 10 a.m. If you saw WSB TV, we are going to have a graduation parade. But what it did not state is what we have found a way for all students to walk around the stage, get their diploma cover, hear their name, and get their photo taken. Ms. Jensby is now going to share with us what that looks like. and give us a moment we're new at these live sessions, so we're trying to figure this out. <laughs> okay. All right, y'all, can uh, you see this PowerPoint slide? Actually, yes. can you see it? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, cool. So, um, the second part of our graduation proposal, like she said, was um, an in-person sort of graduation parade slash drive-through. Um, and what that looks like um, is we sat as a team for a long time trying to decide um, what the best way to celebrate these students was, because um, we feel like they have definitely been working hard this entire time, and we'd like to celebrate them and all of their hard work and allow them um, sort of their own moment. And one of the things that we received feedback from a lot of the students was um, that ceremonially crossing the stage was very important to them. So this was sort of our best um, way to incorporate that while still adhering to health and safety guidelines. Um, so the bottom says families will be permitted one car per graduate to drive through the Jefferson Park neighborhood down Bulldog Boulevard to a graduation stage where students will be announced and celebrated as they take turns walking across the stage, taking a photo and returning to their car while families remain in the vehicle to watch. Um, and so I'm gonna show you a little bit about um, what that map looks like and some of the details and guidelines that we'll be following for this process. Um, so this is a map of the Jefferson Park neighborhood. Um, and you can see in the bottom left-hand corner right here, um, this is where we'll have cars enter. So they'll drive um, onto, this is technically, I guess, millage, but I think maybe right here it's still called, um, I'm not sure what that street is called. If somebody remembers, help me out. Um, the stars show where the police officer will be. So we'll have officers here directing traffic to help you pull into this gym parking lot. 
Um, and then we'll have cars sort of weave their way through here so we can help control traffic um, and keep too many cars from being on Norman Barry. So cars will follow these arrows. Everything marked in yellow is a sign that will indicate where cars will go. So we'll have an officer here to help control traffic. Cars will turn left um, and then go down these two streets. So this full section is about a mile long. Um, and we will be notifying the Jefferson Park neighborhood to let them know that about these road closures um, and invite them to come and stand on their um, front porches and watch the graduates. So they'll pull through here, turn left right before the Jefferson Avenue Baptist Church, um, turn left again, and then this is the street that is connected to Bulldog Boulevard. So this was sort of the safest and easiest and straightest route that would allow us to line up the graduate vehicles. Um, and then here we'll have an officer where the cars will split into two rows. And those two rows will kind of help enable anybody who is in any of these cars along this path to be able to still see the stage. So we've placed a stage in the middle um, of Bulldog Boulevard, and this is a closer close up view. So as these cars pull up, they will pull to either side of the stage. Um, and then here the graduates will receive their diploma cover. Um, Miss Love will be standing on stage. Village photography will be present to take a photo. Um, and all these circles just represent faculty and staff that will help guide students. Um, and so the car will pull up ahead of the stage so that anybody within the car can watch the graduate cross the stage. They'll immediately take a photo as they exit the stage, get back into the vehicle, and then um, cars can leave out Jefferson Avenue and onto Millage. Um, and we are asking that as soon as graduates leave the stage, they get back directly back into their vehicles and the car leaves directly so that we can um, sort of allot enough time for 300 graduates to cross the stage. Um, these are some of our guidelines that we've set up and some of these will be reiterated. Um, but if anybody wants to take like a picture of some of these guidelines to sort of help prepare themselves. Um, we are limiting this to one vehicle per graduate um, and the, the graduate must be in that vehicle. So it's not, um, it's just one vehicle per graduate. Um, and we are asking that no one leave the vehicle except for the graduate when they are directed to. Um, number one for time's sake and also just for safety's sake, we're gonna ask that everybody remain in the vehicle. Um, some of the other rules that, um, are important is just making sure that students do not sit on top of the vehicles because they will be on some of the major roads, um, but they may use vehicles that have sunroofs or um, if any of you have been to the homecoming parade, students will sometimes sort of sit out of the window or um, poke through the sunroofs. Um, we are also asking that there isn't any amplified sound from your vehicle during the parade because we will be providing sound down Bulldog Boulevard, as well as um, providing a way for all of the families to be able to hear who is crossing the stage as they are going through the parade route. Um, one of the other things that we just want to make sure is that the number of seatbelts in the vehicle is the number of occupants in the vehicle. So. Um, However many seatbelts your vehicle has will be the number of occupants that can come and attend the graduation. Um, the last one um, is just a preparation. There will not be any restrooms available for graduates or families because you will be moving slowly along a parade route. Um, and so just be prepared for that and please be patient with us as this happens. We're really trying our best to provide the best opportunity to celebrate our graduates and um, we will not be able to provide restrooms during that time. Um, families may decorate the vehicles of their graduate if they'd like. So if you want to provide balloons or streamers or signs or car paint, um, you're more than welcome to. We just ask that no profanity or obscene language be on the vehicle. Um, and then if you have any questions about these guidelines or would like to ask any further questions, put them in the chat um, and we'll go back through at the end and talk about them. Um, for anybody who's worried about sort of security and safety, um, we are requiring that any of our faculty and staff that are there um, have their temperature taken as is required by Fulton County guidelines, as well as wear masks. Um, and um, we will have police officers as well as SRO officers, our school campus police, 
um, and our staff will be there to sort of help direct. Um, I think that is it for me. So I'm going to give this back to Ms. Bias. Sorry, I'm having a couple of little technical difficulties. <laughs> okay. Um, so just a reminder, things to keep in mind. One car per senior, only enough people in a car as there are seatbelts. Car can be decorated, but must be appropriate. Senior must be wearing his or her cap and gown. Only the senior may get out of the car at the designated spot to walk across the stage and parade will take a while. We need you to be patient and understanding there will be no restrooms. Due to safety reasons, students will return to TCHS May 20th to pick up their diploma and other awards. We will send this schedule out on May 8th. Senior dues for this year are gonna be 110. What is included is yearbook, senior class t-shirt, career fair and activities that we had this year, and graduation. For those that have paid over this amount, we will work on providing a refund for the extra amount. Our goal is to refund prom first. The next senior parent meeting will be May 8th at 7 p.m. This will be after senior clearance day that occurs May 7th and May 8th. You'll get information um, after your student is clear for graduation. And then at that meeting, we will go through what the parade and virtual ceremony look like again, and then um, answer again any more questions that you have after reading the information that we send out. So now at this time, we have time for some questions and answers. So any questions that you guys have, please um, put them in the Q&A and we will answer them live for you guys. So you won't be able to see each other's questions and answers, but we're able to see those questions and then let you guys know what's happening. Okay, uh, Ms. Vice, this is Jones. I'm gonna go ahead and read some questions that we have. Okay. Is that okay? Sure. All right, so let's just um, recap again. If a student does not participate in the parade, when would they come pick up their diploma and diploma cover or and whatever else? That was May 20th, the next okay. day after the parade. Perfect. OK, and then um, is there a list or order of what vehicle, like how they line up? No. So um, families will just line up in the order that they arrive. And so as soon as we'll open the gates at 10 a.m., which is when our parade starts, um, we won't open much earlier than that because we are um, closing down roads and we won't have the capacity to hold everyone before 10 a.m. So. 10 a.m. will open the gates um, and then however, whatever order that cars arrive, will just line up in the parade and students will be given a note card. They'll write their name on it um, to be read when they walk across stage, just like we've done in the past for graduation. Um, OK, we're some students are asking when can they get their stuff? Sorry, their stuff out of their locker. Um, for lockers, those only those students who have a locker, we will contact um, one day this week and, and we'll let you guys know exactly what that process will look like. So those who have a locker will get a call this week and we'll, the, we'll let them know what that process looks like and when they can come get stuff out of their lockers. <laughs> question is there a list or order of what vehicle uh, will we line up alphabetically yes. miss jensby answered that question it's going to be based on when they arrive so gates will open up at the parade will start at 10 that's when we're going to release the cars or i mean people can't get there early so as soon 
as we start at 10, they will line up. Okay, Somebody wants to know. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Ms. Bison, you address the lockers, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, sorry, I'm just scrolling down. Ms. Bice. Yes, ma'am. Question from someone here. What if we did not get a cap and gown? Can we still get one for our senior? Yes, they need to go to herbjones.com and they can order the cap and gown there. That wasn't, um, I've neglected to mention it, but the graduates who are crossing the stage will be wearing their cap and gown because we'll also have village photography there to take their graduation photos. So they'll take their photos just like they would at um, a traditional graduation. Um, and so we're asking that everyone be in their cap and gown to cross the stage. Um, I'm just reading by, just give us a second. Okay. Um, as far as I'm, we're getting a lot of questions regarding summer graduation. Um, that is not an option with Fulton County. Part of the reason is, is that our school year ends in May, so we're keeping it with the end of the school year, but also we don't know what the future holds in June or July. So we could possibly delay this and have a graduation set for June or July, but then have to dismiss it and do what we're doing anyway. We don't know what the future holds. And also Fulton County, I mean, the entire county is graduating before the end of the school year. And if I can add, we have been given the, um, authority to work with our community agencies. Uh, so if it's PTA or alumni or another community en entity that would like to organize something, we are willing to work with that group to do something to celebrate our seniors at that time. But it would be definitely in the summer and when social distancing is lifted. Ms. Bice. Yes, ma'am. What about seniors who have AP exams after clearance day and need their devices? So <clears throat> we will have a list um, for the media center for those who are in dual enrollment and those who are taking AP exams. And so for clearance day, they're going to get um, some sort of documentation to sign verifying that we are still going to get their device after clearance day. It'll only be for those who are actually in dual enrollment and who are actually planning on taking the AP exam and it'll be some kind of signed consent stating that we will receive those devices in um, at the end of the year. There's a question. If I pay the whole amount of my senior dues before the pandemic, can I pay for the cap and gown with that? I want to say yes. However, there's a process for refunding money that we have to go through. And so to answer that, we need we would have to refund your money and then you would have to replay, uh, reapply those funds. And to answer someone else's question about when funds will be refunded for prom and graduation. So funding for prom will start this Friday, May 1st. That takes up to six to 10 days and that's going to go back through OSP. If you do want your money uh, to be received in a check, say that your account is closed or something like that, then you will need to email Ms. Beist at B-U-I-S-T-A at FultonSchools.org and CC Ms. Brownlee, B-R-O-W-N-L-E-E -E at FultonSchools.org. If you are requesting the check, that time will take longer. It'll take from 10 to 14 days versus the OSP refund of six to 10 days. Okay, we have um, a question. When would we get our senior jackets? Um, I actually just got them delivered to my house. So, they will get those on May 7th or May 8th as a part of their clearance stuff. Okay. And then will we, how will seniors be able to find out what they owe before they come to clearance May 7th and 8th? Um, as I said before, we do have a, and I'm going to put it back up. We do have a um, 
form that we need people to fill out so that we can verify and make sure that we have the right email address. Um, this is going to be a process and I don't know a an easy way to do this. Um, this is something that the team is working on how to figure that out prior to May 7th and May 8th, but the plan is to get organized um, from all the stations, what students owe, as in textbooks, uniforms, dues, all of that, um, and try to send it out through those student email addresses. Okay, I saw another question. Do we have to um, have a mask to cross the stage? No, so all everybody working graduation will be wearing masks. Um, students um, will not wear masks because they are getting their photo taken. It'll be just up to the stage. They'll nod to Miss Love, come down the stairs, get their photo taken, and then get immediately back in the car. There will be at max two students out of the vehicle at one time, and they will definitely be six feet apart. There's a question about student dues. If um, student hasn't paid dues, is 110 all that is owed or all that has to be paid? That is for your senior dues, but if you owe other dues to the district for books or devices and things like that, those will need to be paid separately. Um, I just wanted you to say out loud, Ms. Bice, again, um, about how other people in the family can access the graduation, that we're going to have it streaming and those things. Say that one more time. Um, a parent had said, will you guys stream it for the family who won't be able to make it? So I just wanted you to repeat that. Oh, uh, the are you talking about the parade? Yes. So yes, um, this part will take um, some time to get out. So we will be recording the parade. Um, the only problem is that we don't want to, if it takes three hours, we don't want to send out a three hour video. So there is going to need to be some editing done with that video. So it might be June once that comes out. But yes, we are definitely going to record the parade and we are definitely going to send it out. Just understand that it's going to take a decent amount of time to edit and shorten um, the period breaks that are occurring. Um, I saw a question about how will we be able to get official picture of the student crossing the stage? It's through village photography, which we use for every graduation. Um, and so they will what's going to happen is is on May 7th and May 8th when they do their clearance, um, the students, um, before they get their stamp for senior dues, they are going to fill out a digital form on their cell phone for village photography in which it'll put their address and email and all that information. And so they are going to email you once the graduation pictures are up on their website and you can order those pictures from there. There's a question here. What's going to happen for families that don't have cars? They will need to make arrangements as best they can. Unfortunately, this is not. We're, we've come up with the best possible solution to meet as many needs as possible. There is a question about seniors or who's used the band for locker, the band room for lockers. We will that all of that information will um, be called out to parents or to students this week on how to retrieve those items next week. Um, there was a question about, I'm guessing kids that maybe ordered their cap and gown late. So I know that you picked that up, the kids are going to pick that up on 7th and 8th, but what if they ordered them late? If they order them before the 7th and 8th, they'll still get a cap and gown. Herb Jones always provides extra so that students are able to get those when they come to pick them up. Um, I see a lot of questions kind of about what we've already discussed and I'm just going to quickly recap. Um, May 7th and May 8th is senior clearance. This is where students will drop off textbooks, devices. Um, they'll make sure that they've cleared for any missing fees or whatever for clubs and all that. They'll get academically cleared. At the end, they will get their honor cords from their clubs and organizations. Um, they will get 
their cap and gown, all of that is happening at Senior Clearance Day on May 7th and May 8th. Kids are asking what to wear under their cap and gown. We'll send um, dress guidelines along with the parade route um, in sort of a graduation parade information packet. Um, <clears throat> but most likely um, sort of general graduation attire. As long as it's school appropriate. It's typically black for women. I have a question here from Miss, from a parent. When we will be refunded for senior dues and prom? We, we answered that question. Uh, refunds for prom will start happening on May 1st. Once we finish that, then we will move to senior dues. Um, diplomas, keep getting that question. Again, that's after the parade, May 20th. Ashley, correct me if I'm wrong. If they've not paid senior dues, they need to go to the website in the OSP uh, form on the website to pay senior dues, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, if y'all would give us a little bit of patience, we do need to update it with the new senior dues um, so that it reflects 110 instead of the now 335. Um, so we will get that updated and send it out on our mind to pay for senior dues though. You go to the Tri-Cities High School website, scroll, or this is to pay for anything um, in terms of Tri-Cities. You go to the Tri-Cities High School website, scroll all the way down to the bottom right and you'll see a button that says OSP and you'll find textbooks, clubs and organizations, senior dues, all of that is all in one link. If you click on the link and it doesn't work, just click go back and click on OSP again and it's worked just fine. Miss Jones, there's a question. Where do I get to see my ASVAB scores? That's a great question. Let me uh, reach out to our JRTC department and I can send that on on Remind. For the the parade, parade, go ahead. I was going to say the parade is May the 19th at 10 a.m. For um, those of you who missed what time and date you should show up for clearance, we are going to send that information out on Remind again. So if you missed your last name, we are going to send that out on Remind. Um, if you have any questions regarding your pathways, please contact your pathway teacher and they will let you know if you are getting a cord or not. The question about late senior dues. Um, every student will pay $110, so whatever you have over that will be refunded back to you. And then I think we've kind of answered every question. Again, if there's anything that you guys missed, um, the recording of this is going to go online and we will send it out on Remind. Um, I have notes here that I'll also put on Remind. And again, if you missed what your time is and date for senior clearance, those slides are also going to go out. If you have any other further questions or concerns, um, feel free to message me on Remind. Um, and I think that's it. Y'all have a great night. Ashley, can you put up the, um, the QR code for the email addresses just one more time? Yes. I think that one was a, a big one that students may have missed. Yep. So this is so that we can email students about information regarding their lockers and their textbooks, correct? Yes, so this will 
I mean, this this is going to take some time, but this is where we're going to send out any lost tech or any textbooks that are still out of um, that still need to be turned in. What you owe for devices, any of that information. And again, just keep in mind that everything needs to be paid prior to the seventh and eighth because we don't have time for. Um, I mean, we only have the time allotted to make sure that everybody gets in and out safely. All right, y'all have a great night. We're going to go ahead and end this. Any questions you have, feel free to message us on our mind. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Jackie, before you go, there's a question about final transcripts. When do students receive final transcripts? I'm sorry, Ms. Jones, could you answer that? Um, yes, yeah, so usually final transcripts aren't available for seniors till probably two weeks after the end date. Um, so I'm still going to hold to that, and that's what is normally expected by colleges. It could be earlier, but you know, I just because of everything that's going on, I I don't want to say so. But as long as the student ordered a final transcript through parchment, and I'll make sure to include that in the rest of our conversations. If kids don't already know, they need to order their transcript through parchment, and once final transcripts are ready, they'll automatically go out to those schools. So I'd say June 1st at the earliest, but possibly two weeks after May 22nd. All right, well, everybody have a great night.